the most meaningful davening that I've ever experienced. And I, I don't have like one specific tefillah in my mind, but I do find that the most meaningful davening I experience is when I'm in pain. And it really helped me to understand the teaching that Hashem deprived our avos and imahos of children because Hashem desires their tefillos. And I see that as much as we say, well, Hashem, I'll serve you from joy, you know, I'll serve you from success. The truth is that my most heartfelt, connective, dveikos filled moments with Hashem are born of pain. And that's just the truth. And that's the most meaningful davening that I've ever experienced. A challenge that I have with my personal tefillah and how I work towards overcoming it. So ironically, the same thing that brings me to my most connective tefillah with Hashem is also what serves as my greater, my greatest barrier and obstacle to connecting with Hashem. And that is my pain, my challenges. I have some great personal challenges in my parenting and, um, over the years, it has been extremely excruciating for me to connect and talk to Hashem because over the years it has felt, and please excuse my bold terms, it has felt that I have been bullied by Hashem and picked on by Hashem. And that has been my greatest obstacle. How have I worked towards overcoming it? By just staying the course and going through the motions. You know, people often talk about going through the motions as though that's a bad thing. And if you stay there, it is a bad thing. But going through the motions can be a bridge, like a scaffolding that keeps you connected until you can regrow your inner connection to Hashem. I'm going to give you a gross example. When my son was a teenager, he was playing basketball and he got hit in the face with a basketball and it knocked his front tooth loose. Now he had braces at the time and the braces served as a scaffolding to hold his tooth in place. And because of that, the tooth reconnected and regrew and is fine now. And so I went through the motions, even when I didn't feel like talking to Hashem, and even when I felt estranged or picked on, I just kept doing it. I'm not going to say that I daven Shachar Semencha every single day in those years, but I did keep talking to Hashem. Even if my conversations with Hashem were merely, Hashem, I don't understand you. Hashem, I can't talk to you. Hashem, I feel like you're being mean to me but at least I was talking because in a relationship, like that's why I called my book on Tefillah Conversations with God, just like in a relationship with a human being. As long as you're talking, there's some semblance of a relationship. When you stop talking, that's where estrangement happens. And so, you know, I tell people, like even if you're in a relationship, which is negative or bad, if at all possible, just stay civil, stay polite, you know, stay in touch. So, Again, excuse the bold terminology, but I just, I just stayed civil with Hashem. I kept talking to him, even though I didn't feel connected and I didn't feel in love. And that scaffolding really helped me to stay connected so that when I did regrow my relationship with Hashem, you know, the bones were there. When I think of what davening should look like, whose image comes to mind. So at the risk of terribly embarrassing her, my role model in Tefillah is my mother-in-law. When I was a girl, we used to go to Tel's Yeshiva in Cleveland for Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. And ironically, my family was seated right next to my in-laws family. Just a friendly reminder, we were not related yet. And I would sort of, as a little girl, like hold my machzer and sort of sneak peek over to my mother-in-law and watch her daven. And her kavana and her passion and her deep well of emotionality and tefillah to this day, serves to me as an incredible role model. Now, I don't know that I will ever be able to dive in the way my mother-in-law dives. I'm a very impatient person. But even if I can't get it in breadth and scope, maybe I can at least get it in the depth of my emotions. To the best of my ability, please describe my inner experience of being Omed Lifnei Hashem. So in my best moments in tefillah, and I will say most of my best moments in tefillah happen in shul. My husband and I run a kir of shul, and we sing a lot of the davening. And for me, it's very much the music that turns on my neshama to davening. And it is the tunes that stir up my neshama. 
I think it's a shame that in many shuls we're no longer doing a lot of singing. And so for me, it's the external that awakens the internal. It's the chitzonios that awakens the panemios. And then when I hear those tunes, it really connects my brain to the meaning of the words. And especially if I hear like a tune that's new or different, it'll kind of reframe the words in a new way. And that's when I'll really be awash in this emotionality. And I'll be like, oh my gosh, Hashem, I'm standing here before you. And these words are magnificent. And and now I feel connected in a way that I couldn't necessarily do by myself. So those are my thoughts on Tefillah. And I hope you enjoy that.